Tell me what the world's like. When you turn on the news, what do you see? Well, between all the violence and war and terrorism and the AIDS pandemic and global warming, we've got to say our world's pretty messed up. What's interesting is how we feel about that. Uh, none of us think that that's a great thing. All of us long and ache for a better world. Well, isn't that interesting? Because um, hunger seems to point to the fact that food exists and thirst points to the fact that water or drink exists. So our longing and aching for a better world seems to point to the fact that either a better world did exist or will one day exist. Well, in the Christian worldview, we believe it did. And that uh, back in the day, um, God designed it so that the planet took care of us and we took care of it and we took care of each other and God took care of us and we blessed him back and that the whole thing was designed for good. So how did we get here? Well, we decided that we were going to run the show and when we started chasing our own needs above caring for other people or the planet, we started damaging the planet, we started damaging our relationship with each other and ultimately we damaged our relationship with God so that the whole thing was damaged by evil. Well, it's great that God actually loves the planet and us too much to leave us that way. So even in our brokenness, in the Christian worldview 2,000 years ago, God came as Jesus. And in that, he started to teach us a better way to live and began to tell us about this thing called the reign of God, where all the good things that's supposed to happen actually do. And so he taught us, and in his death, all this crap died with him so that three days later, when he came back to life, there's new life possible throughout everything, throughout the planet, in us, and with each other. And so everything is being restored for better. Well, then what's our response? Well, in this world, that's still messed up. Jesus is starting a revolution and he's asking us to be healed ourselves in Jesus name to be healed in each other and to go out and heal the planet and that our mission is to be sent together to heal now how come I can't just jump from here to here this sounds great well the world's problems are infinite and we're going to get overwhelmed trying to take care of this on our own. We actually need Jesus' resources so that we can become the kind of good that we want to see on the planet. And that's crucial. So where are you? Are you here where you think the world is peachy? Or here, overwhelmed by the world's problems? Or are you here, got some sense of God working in your life but not involved in his mission? Or you're here, you're trying to actually make this world a better place, relationships and you and everything, but have a hard time finding how God fits into the picture. Where are you? If you chose this circle and you think the world is peachy, well, we've already talked about how the world is pretty messed up. So you'd be avoiding reality. The invitation for you is to see the world as it really is. But some of you chose this circle because you're overwhelmed by the evil in the world and even the evil in your own heart. Jesus responds by offering us two great things, hope and forgiveness. In hope, Jesus and his followers have been at the forefront of almost every great social movement that was for good in the past 2,000 years. Stuff like human rights, civil rights, public education, women's suffrage, the abolitionist movement, rights for the disabled. These are all things that were spearheaded by Christians. Uh, the only exception that I can think of is Gandhi and nonviolent resistance. But even he got his idea from Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus and his followers have been on this movement for the past 2,000 years and in the end of time, we will all live in a world where this evil no longer exists. That's the hope. But there's also forgiveness. We all know the junk in our hearts. And through Jesus and the cross and his resurrection, he offers us forgiveness so that we can join this movement without guilt or shame. Some of us chose this circle because we're followers of Jesus, but we're not a part of this, healing the world. And Jesus wants to make it clear that if we're not a part of this, then we're a part of this. And we've made faith about what we can get out of it and what it can do for us. And in so doing, we're the exact opposite of loving God and loving our neighbor. Some of us chose this because we want to be a part of healing the world, but we don't know how Jesus or spirituality fits into all that. And the rub is this. There is a lot of evil in the world, and the only way to give lasting response, uh, lasting good in a context of evil is through love. We can't do it through our anger. We can't do it through our hatred. We can't do it through our pride or our fears. 
We have to do it through love. And Jesus, in his love for us, offers us a chance to be fully loved in ourself and in that, for that to spread out into our relationships and in our attitude toward the world. And so in, through Jesus, we can become the greatest lovers on the planet. And in so doing, we can bring the greatest amount of good. No matter which circle you chose, uh, Jesus wants us to respond in two ways. First, he wants us to have a change of mind, a complete shift in perspective to say that we don't want to live like this anymore and we see it your way and we ask Jesus for forgiveness. We're sorry for living this way. And not only do we have a change in perspective, Jesus also wants us to trust him, to trust his way of seeing the world, to trust what he's doing in the world, to trust him, and ultimately to trust him so much to allow him to be the leader of our lives so that he can change us on the inside and he can change our relationships and he can bring healing to the world through us. So how does it sound? Do you want Jesus to be the leader of your life?